Welcome back everyone, my name's Wade, this is Bourbon Hall, and we are going to be reviewing the newest batch of Booker's. This is the Beam House batch, number two of this year of 2024. Let's get it. All right, since you guys are here, smash a like, hit subscribe, comment down below. I lost the taste in cheap, but that's fine. All right, usually they write kind of a saga on there. All right, so this is Booker's. It's the, the 2024-02 batch. It is the Beam House batch, and it comes in at 124.4 proof. It's seven years, two months, and 22 days. Okay, and uh, just a disclaimer, I am kind of a Jim Beam fan. I am a Jim Beam homer. For, there are batches that I don't care for. I really like the Mighty Fine batch last year. That was the 03 batch. Found that really tasty. I have backup bottles of that. That's how good I thought it was. Ah. And I'm almost uh, decent at getting the wax strip off of these. Let's see here. Let's get a good cork pop. Eh, it's all right. So let's see. It's got a nice color to it. I'm gonna put this here so we can kind of have it front and center for you guys. All right. We'll see if that goes into focus or not. Uh, I'm gonna put it over here because it's just, my eyes uh, like it to be on that side. All right, so. I just tried, I, I'm gonna put up here, uh, it is the uh, little book, uh, Path Not Taken, number eight. Chapter number eight, excuse me. I really enjoyed it. <coughs> Whew. I really enjoyed it. And so I think it's something that uh, I would encourage people to try. Um, I would like you guys, if you haven't seen the review, go take a look at that. And if you are a Jim Beam fan at all, I think that you're really gonna like it. It's a rye, it's a real heavy rye. And so it's, uh, I thought it's definitely one of the top ryes of this year. So this, I haven't tried the first batch of the Bookers of this year. Um, I just usually wait until one falls into my lap a little bit. This one did. And so we're gonna try it. I bought this one for $103. Um, that's still more than I wanna pay for a Bookers but it is what it is. I have more than I need of Booker's, but I would assume right off the bat, I haven't looked at any reviews. I try to keep myself very clean before I shoot a review of a product such as this. Here's what I'm expecting. Um, peanut, um, that's very Jim Beam-esque. Um, kind of uh, powerful on the tongue. Uh, you, like these are, like I said, 120 something proof. And that's going to be most of the time they drink a little hotter than they are. Um, they can be kind of aggressive. And that's what I liked about the Mighty Fine batch. That was pretty sweet. I didn't get a lot of nut on there. It was just a different batch. Not that I dislike it, but a lot of these kind of blend together. Some batches are phenomenal and others are just general batches. So anyway, okay. I get like kind of a, Hazelnut and peanut, like a mixed nuts. If you ever open like a can of mixed nuts, that's kind of what it smells like. And that's one of my favorite snacks, man. I love just a, some salted mixed nuts. I don't know if that says anything about me. All right, I'm gonna let that sit there for a little bit. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, if you like to support or support me in any way, check out the merch. It's linked down below in the description. There's also a Patreon. We are gonna be continuing to kind of add some things as it gains some traction. We've got some really awesome members in there already, and I'm really excited. There's a few things I have in the works that I'm not letting anybody know about yet. And uh, so Patreon, it's gonna get fun here in a little bit. I'm really excited. Anywho. Yeah. It's got a nice amount of oil. Let's see if we get anything else out of here. Mm. I caught just like a caramel cake, vanilla cake on the nose. Sprinkled with peanuts. Ah, what is that? 
almost okay. So there was a lady in my hometown that used to make peanut butter rolls, and it was like a cinnamon roll, but with peanut butter frosting and like chopped peanuts on top. They were phenomenal and terrible for you. I guarantee, I don't know. I, I ate them a lot as a kid. And we'd go out and hunt pheasants out of her place. Uh, her grandson was in my class. And for breakfast, we'd get out there at 5.45 in the morning, you know, before daybreak. And so she would have a whole pan of those waiting for us high school boys. And boy, was that something that you like free and you just gorged yourself. I still remember one time they had that and they had gallons of whole milk fresh from like there was just a dairy down the, the road. And we ate and drank that. And by the time it was time to go hunt, <laughs> a majority of us could barely bend over to like tie our shoes and our boots because of we were so full. Ah, good memories though, good memories. All right, I don't know if you guys can see the color. Yeah. Seems to be about a seven, seven-ish year bourbon. All right, cheers, let's try it. Yeah. Aggressive on the palate, as most bookers are. You get kind of a caramel peanut, a caramel nut of some sort. It kind of actually goes into almost a brittle or kind of a sugar that's been cooked a little bit longer and, and kind of got hard. Not like a brulee, like not a burnt, but almost like something that's just went a little bit farther. A peanut brittle, which I absolutely love. Um, peanut brittle, it's one of my favorite holiday like crunchy sweets. Oh, my dad used to make the best peanut brittle. But there's some people out there that make just, uh, the candy dishes. Do you guys still do candy dishes for like holidays? I need to get back into that. Just another Booker's box that I put into the collection. Ran out of room to have them on my shelves. I need to build another shelf. Oh, let's see. Get some mouse here. Oh. I think I talked myself into it, but I almost got like a little bit of a sweet frosting, that peanut butter sweet frosting. Mm, take me back. Take me back to Niemeyer's farm. Yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah. Okay. That is a great bourbon. It's very delicious. It is a little aggressive. The second one, uh, second sip kind of tones it down. You get kind of acclimated to that burn and the overall palate of it. Yeah, I, I get kind of a, like a, a sweet frosting off the nose. And then you get the peanut brittle. And so you have a little bit of vanilla in there and peanut. That is a pretty much the quintessential Booker's to me. Am I blown away by it? No. Do I need another bottle of it? No, I've got too many bottles of Booker's as it is. Would I recommend someone get a pour of this at a bar? Definitely. I think this is something most people would really enjoy. I thought, I think if you got that for a 10 buck pour, I know, I know. Where are you gonna find anything for 10 bucks anymore? Um, 15 bucks, that's eh, probably like for one pour of this batch. Yeah, you're not gonna be disappointed with the product within the glass. Yeah, it's Booker's. That's 100% Booker's. And so that's not a demerit. You get what you get and that's actually nice, right? And so that, that's something that uh, we always try to like hope for something extravagant. This is just a really good batch again of Booker's. Um, I am not disappointed with that at all. Is it uh, the Mighty Fine batch? No, cause that one was just, it was just different. I really enjoyed that one. I'm gonna enjoy this as well. Um, this is gonna make fantastic um, pours around with all my buddies when they get here. We're gonna have another bourbon night, hopefully in a, in a hopefully in a month or so, when it starts to really get hot and we wanna be down in the, the basement bar, right? <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, let's have some nice bourbon and not be surprised by it. 
yeah, you get what you get. Can't complain about it. But appreciate you guys. Until next time, let's drink some nice bourbon. And don't forget, it's worth sharing. Can't wait to share this with some of my friends. And hopefully, if you guys stop by, maybe I'll share some with you. Until next time, cheers.